Welcome to another edition of Vigorously with me, Val Klein Hands. Leah Martin Brown is here. She is a vocalist, guitarist, songwriter. Welcome. Very happy to have you here. Thanks so much. I'm very excited. Uh, this is going to be fun. I know it's going to be fun. I feel it too. One of the fun facts that I read about you, speaking of fun, was that you don't like the texture or sound of styrofoam. And I completely get that because it makes like that weird hollow, like crackling sound when it breaks. Like that's like, oh, it, yeah, it's I not, know. It's, ah. like, it's the squeaking for me. And the, oh, I, the just, squeaking. Oh, I can't, I, it's, uh, mm, no, it's not a good time. No. I don't like it. It's ugh. no. No, but. that's how I feel about nail files. Nail files is my thing. Oh, I don't like yeah. I don't like how they feel and I don't like how they sound. So I don't even use them. I'm just like, Whoa. yeah, like it just I can it, feel that. That sawdust smell that like <laughs> kind of comes off them too. I'm like, no, I I could never yeah. be a nail technician. No, I couldn't either. I have so much respect for them because I I don't mind so much, but it's just like, yeah, it's a, it's gross. It's kind of a gross feeling. <laughs> Well, so what other weird facts can you reveal? Uh, I feel like I revealed a fair few of them the other day. I like to measure my forks. I like to have the smallest fork available. Uh, obviously, when you're dining out, that's a little hard. But at home, I definitely do that. That's another one. What, what, is that just like a portion control thing? or no, just, just I just a sizing like small thing. forks. <laughs> yeah. You want to show them a little love, too. There's always yeah, that one, just... there's always that like one utensil, like that fork or that spoon or that knife that I think you're, you're an adult when you look at a particular spoon, fork or knife that you have in your collection and you're like have disdain for it because somehow it's not on the level of whatever else you have for no reason whatsoever. But you're like, ah, I don't want to use that one. There's some reason that it's that one. <laughs> yes, I I have utensils like that in my drawer. I have pans <laughs> like that in my drawer. They're just like lesser than, and I try not to use them wherever possible. I know, and there's no reason for it. No rhyme, uh, no reason, no, none you whatsoever. Just like the other ones better. Yeah, you just feel it. <laughs> well, it's I gotta tell you, I, it is a part of why I hit follow on your IG is your style. I love it, and I knew. I was thinking that we shopped at some of the same places. And then when I saw you open a Disturbia bag recently, I was like, there it is. There it is. That's the one. Where else do you would like to shop? On it. So I love Disturbia. I really love Black Milk. Black Milk clothing mm, has been a yeah. big favorite of mine for a very long time. I do like Killstar. I think Killstar is really great. Those are kind of, kind of my main ones. That's yes. kind of where I've been going. I like to wander around uh, some of the shops on Melrose sometimes. I like Foxblood as well. That's like a new favorite of mine. I'm starting to find some cool things there. So, Yeah, and they have a lot of good options just for like fun stage clothes too. When you want to like take, I mean, they're already edgy brands in my opinion, but like you can go full edgy with those, like full goth or full alternative, whatever it is you want. Like that's that's what I love is that they'll, they'll take that direction sometimes i'll shop there if i'm in the mood i don't know i i like urban outfitters for like a good graphic tee or whatever yeah. so i don't know why but sometimes i just prefer their designs and then i think it also depends on like the item that i'm looking for like if it's a basic pair of black shorts i don't mind going to target like it's not yeah. that deep you know what i mean when, when it when when the assignment is not that deep you're like i'll just pretty much get it from anywhere i really don't care so absolutely <laughs> Yeah. I could shop all day. I love shopping. I uh, I get in my head what I want, and I know that it's it's mm -hmm. a blessing and a curse because I know so much what I don't want that I can't I can't come to a halfway. If I can't find exactly what I want, I won't buy anything. And that's <laughs> with anything, and that applies to anything in life, which that's makes good, me though. a very patient person. Because if I can't find exactly what I want, I won't have anything. I'd rather not have it, which is annoying but also like it's a good thing because it means i won't settle for things it won't i won't settle so okay your wallet must be writing you thank you cards regularly then because because you're an intentional buyer that's that's what level i want to be on oh uh, i i'd like to think it was but you know i love to eat out at restaurants so mm, that's where my money is. goes i know yeah I, I love love eating out 
<laughs> Are you a patient person when it comes to music and putting your music together? I have been, I have to be a patient person because if I'm not, I would go absolutely insane. The project that I'm currently in the process of releasing. So we've had two singles now, the third one's out next Friday. Mm -hmm. That was three years of waiting, not mm -hmm. finishing it, not completing it. Like it was completed and that was three years of waiting. So that's, you kind of have to be patient, unfortunately. Uh, so yes, I'd say so. Yeah. And I, one of that single you're talking about, I know what it's called. It's shush going to be out very, very soon. Cannot wait. A little birdie told me Mutt Lang, the legendary Mutt Lang assisted you on this. Walk me through that. What happened? Sure. So three years ago in 2021, uh, I was living in Stockholm, Sweden, and I was asked oh. to do this project with Mutt Lang and Tony Nilsson. And I have a whole album that I recorded with them. The first two singles are already out. Boys was released March 1st and Hysterical Love was released re released, <laughs> released May 31st. And so this is part of a, a bigger album that we're working towards the release of. It was a pretty surreal experience. Obviously, Mutt Lang, I was, I'm a huge fan of ACDC, Bon right, Scott right. era and Brian Johnson, but definitely Bon Scott, um, it was a bucket list when I was about 12 to work with Mutt Lang and I've always been like, oh, what if, what if, what if? And then to be given this opportunity was a huge moment for me. Uh, it's going to be a two album kind of deal. There's this first album, which was already kind of done. And I'm just in the process of figuring out with management and with Tony and with Mutt, like when I get to work on the second album, because I am going to be able to co-write the second album, which is very exciting. Uh, what is it like being in the studio with him and just interacting with him? That's what I want to know. Honestly, I don't get to directly do much of that. I work mainly with Tony Nielsen and they send everything because Mutt at the time it was the pandemic. So we weren't allowed to travel. Oh, so I was in Sweden, that... Mutt was in Switzerland. So I would work with Tony and he would send my vocal takes to Mutt and then Mutt would have all of his notes and things that he'd say. They'd send it back and I'd either, you know, redo everything or he'd be like, yeah, Stella. And I'd be like, oh my God, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Save that, frame that. <laughs> exactly. So because of the pandemic, it wasn't able to be like directly in studio with him, but that's why the second album's so exciting because that is an opportunity there. I'm just still blown away he knows what my name is, to be perfectly honest. I'm like, you know what I am. I know I exist. That's enough for me, you know? It is. I love, and, but you have a music, uh, really, you have the musical pedigree that is worth taking note of. Like, I mean, honestly, you do. You've been, uh, there's a reason you knew who he was at 12 years old. You studied the craft. <laughs> like, and that's, that's obvious and that's apparent. Uh, so I, I know you picked up the guitar when you were 11, I read. At that time, what inspired you to pick the instrument up? I always sang and I always wrote poetry and I wanted to kind of put them together. Okay. And I always knew that I wanted to do some kind of performance, but it wasn't until I was about nine or 10 that I, I found out I could sing mainly because strangers told me one day and I was like, Oh, cause, you know, my family would be like, very nice dear. Like, please be quiet. Um, <laughs> not in a dismissive way, but when you have a five-year-old right. running around singing part of your world from the little mermaid, every single moment of the day, you're yeah. not really paying attention to what talent might be lying. You're like, please shut the fuck up. Yeah, like, I understand. Really? I would be the same. So it wasn't until I was in a uh, fifth grade that my music teacher and my classmates, they'd set us this little, we had to sing from a song, song book and we had one mm. line each and everyone was like doing silly things because, you know, you're nine years old and they're like saying all these things. And then I came out with mine and I was like, I love the rolling hills. And I was like, what's that? And everyone's like, what? Oh, so you can sing. I'm like, can I sing? Uh, you're I like, don't I know. I yeah. Was that me? Can I? So, yeah, that's, I picked up the guitar because I wanted to be able to accompany myself because it's all well and good to know how to sing. But for me, I needed to be able to play shows and perform on my own terms and not have to rely on anyone else. And mm -hmm. so that's why I play a bit of piano as well. And when I say I play piano, like I take, I've taken lessons and then I can, you know, base, I can get myself through. I'm not a piano player by any state. I'm a songwriter, piano player, but the guitar is very portable. You can play anything on it. It's just 
it, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do and I really enjoyed playing it. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of emotions that you can bring into things, whether it's an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many different ways of playing. I I just felt like that was the right instrument for me. I know what you put that more eloquently than I ever could have, because that's exactly why I fell in love with hard rock and heavy metal, essentially, was the was it was the guitar solos that, you know, do somehow. I don't know what it is about that instrument, but they do evoke emotion. I remember the first time I heard the November Rain solo and I was like, why do I feel something right now? <laughs> it's just an instrument, but I feel like, ha, huh, like this whimsical, like almost sorrowful, like mixture of emotion that was somehow relating to the MySpace era, Rars wannabe scene girl, like yeah. who was a sad emo girl. It, like, <laughs> like somehow that related to her as well. But so that that's that's cool that you know you vibe with it at an early age too. It makes a total sense. So you had a little bit of you you fell in love with it first. A teacher came along at some point. By sixteen, you're a fixture at at home locally. And how in the world does a teenager gain the know how at sixteen to promote themselves and be taken seriously at that young of an age? Things were very different when I was 16. We didn't have, at least in Australia, you know, MySpace had only just started to be a thing. Uh, okay. We didn't have we didn't have Facebook <laughs> because Facebook was restricted to like America and colleges. So mm. I started writing and performing. My school at the time had a very good music program. Uh, we had music teachers that gave us a lot of opportunities to perform. We also had community-based programs that had a lot of opportunities for youth musicians to come through and play shows. And I was just like passionate and driven. I know for a surprise, I'd written, I'd written more than four songs, but I had four songs that I thought were really good. I think I'd written about 20 at that stage, but they were trash. There was four that were, that were okay in my like 13 year old brain. So my mom took me to a recording studio and I just put down a demo, like me and my Fender Strat and just my little voice doing these four, four track demo that I thought was like, Oh, and I just knew that I that's all I wanted to do. So my mum was super supportive. She bought me um, a PA so I could, you know, get get around to gigs and play in restaurants because you have to supply your own PA. My dad bought me my starter um, acoustic electric. My mum then okay. bought me another one a, a bit later. And so anytime, like I had a friend that owned a restaurant, so I'd be like, can I play, can I play? And eventually he's like, oh, my God, just to shut you up, you can play. You can play and you can have, a I'm like, thank you. Uh, and then, I don't know, I just kind of weaseled my way into places and my mom really helped me because that's, it's just all I wanted to do. And I was just very lucky that there were community programs and I had supportive parents and supportive teachers. Like I, that's kind of how it happened. And then by the time I was 16, I was, you know, I was playing in clubs that I probably shouldn't have been in, but my parent, my mom was there. So it was fine. I wasn't getting into too much mischief. <laughs> it was okay. It was fine. Yeah, but uh, that's incredible. And that speaks to the importance of those art programs that sometimes get cut. I mean, I, I don't know about Australia, but here they get cut pretty often. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, same in Australia. Okay. So but that just speaks to the importance of those programs, man. And I definitely want to advocate for them too, especially after hearing your story. You have a Bachelor mm -hmm. of Popular Music degree too, I read. Tell me about the classes that I can take to get that because that sounds like a lot of fun. I want to sign up. Sure. So I have a Bachelor of Property Music and I have a graduate diploma. So I, um, which could have become a master's, but I moved over here. So there mm. I went through our, our university works a little bit different to American college. When you go to university, you already have the degree that you're going to do. You don't do electives. You don't do basics. You just go in and you study the things that you're going to do. So oh, okay. it did, it did change in my first degree, my first degree was a three-year degree and then I added, I got my bachelor's and then I added a fourth year. So I did um, semiotics. Semiotics mm -hmm. is the study of, like the study of music itself. Um, so for example, uh, I wrote an essay on Bohemian Rhapsody and talking about how there are certain times like maybe lyrics might reflect exactly what the notes are doing. So you might mm, be talking yeah. about being swept away and in the melody you're singing up as and it's like sweeping like so really the it's very it was interesting. Uh, we did a lot of audio engineering and recording, which I 
you know what looking back I should have paid more attention but I just the computer yeah. I, I I just that's not <laughs> how my brain works exactly like I can press record I love being in the studio but I'm not a behind the desk person I wish I could be I should have listened that's if you're doing that course, you should listen. It's important. Um, we also did, um, we did like a performance course. We didn't do much performance. So I think that was like five weeks of one semester. We just did a lot of reading about music. We did music theory. Mm. Uh, we did a lot of music history, which was very interesting. And the lecturer yeah. I had at the time, he was around, he was, <laughs> He was around, you know, when Jefferson Airplane were around and stuff, and he'd come into class sometimes and he'd be talking to us about all of these really important things and how music and history tie into each other. We'd be like, what was it like seeing Jefferson Airplane, sir? Yeah. And he's like, I don't know, guys, I was on a lot of acid. And I was... <laughs> it was great. I was like, oh. sounds like you had a good time. Sounds like you had that's a great time. That's on brand. Yeah. That, it, that's it on brand. Great. It was so on brand. So that's, that was fun. I had a, it was a fun time. That, and I love that it's deeper than the pop culture aspect of it too. It's it's deeper than just talking about what's popular or what's, you know, what's on Spotify or what's on the radio, whatever, whatever. I love that it went deeper than that. That sounded a lot like my radio program. It's, it's those fundamentals. You know, when I, when I was in school doing radio, that's what they, they would have us behind the booth. And they're like, no, you need to like learn those fundamentals as to how to work behind the scenes. That is just as important, just like what you're talking about. And announcing itself, enunciating in your diction, that was one part of it. Kind of like how the performance part was like, oh, just one part of it. But I, I love that they teach you the fundamentals. They're very important. And I, I, it's they stay with you. It's huge. They do, and they really uh, have you look at things in a different way. I think at the time I probably didn't appreciate it as much because, again, I was like, I just want to perform. I have no idea what this has to do with anything, but um, it does. Like, it really fostered that, like, deep understanding and knowledge. And then when I was doing my uh, my postgrad or, like, my, my fourth year, that's when I was doing my, all prac. It was music mm -hmm. theory. It was composition and then it was also vocal lessons with one, the main vocal lecturer, uh, which was contemporary jazz voice for the postgrad because they didn't have a popular music option. And I did that three days a week as well, uh, three days a week, like lessons as well, which was insane. Okay. So that was cool. That's Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Just it sounds like an enjoyable environment. Just uh, you're around other people that you want to be around because you're all like minded. That's amazing. I was wondering if you, since you're based in LA now, you come from Australia, compare and contrast LA and Australia. What was that transition like for you? I was very young when I first came here. Well, very young. I was an adult, but I was 20, 22, 23. Mm -hmm. I was 22 when I came here. So I feel like it didn't feel so different in this, in the sense that everyone, it's a Western country, speaks English. Mm, yeah. But I think the difference was at home between Monday and Friday, everyone goes to work. They don't go out. Maybe some of them might, if you're a uni student, you know, you have uni night, but other than that, it's that Los Angeles, every single day and night of the week, there is something on like nobody yeah. here has a job. And if they <laughs> yeah. do have a job, they don't talk about that job because their job is their, like they have the job that makes money. And then the career, if they haven't quite making money with the career yet. And the image. Yeah. Yeah, it's just very, there's always something on. It doesn't matter if it's a Tuesday at 10 a.m. It doesn't matter if it's a Thursday at 4. Like, every single day there is some way that you can network, further your career, perform, and people will turn up. And I mm. thought that was amazing because I don't like to run on normal schedules, and that suited me fine. <laughs> that does sound perfect. I've been in, I've been to LA multiple times. Um, I spent, like, about two and a half months there just, like, living there as an intern. And I love the city. I would go back in a heartbeat for that reason, because there's always something going on. And it's just, it's full of creative people. I love it. I mean, yes. we do we do have that in Minnesota, but on a lesser scale and more so in Minneapolis, not necessarily where I am, which is basically the prairie. Like Laura mm -hmm. Ingalls Wilder is down the street. We're talking that level. Like, <laughs> like she's hanging out with her covered wagon down the street. It's kind of like that. But it's... <laughs> <laughs> it, it you have to go to certain spots to find it it's not impossible but you have to go to certain spots to find it la it's nice to just be surrounded by that so shout out mm -hmm. to the city it's fun tell me more about shush the next single are we stoked are we excited 
I'm so, so excited for this one. Shush is one of my favourites from the album and it's a, it's very different to what people are used to hearing from me as well. I mean, all the last two singles are as well, but this one in particular, obviously I come from like a hard rock, heavy rock background. So this one's fun. It's kind of sexy. It's very, it's kind of like dark pop. Uh, it's a bit like, I don't know, it sounds so like, ugh, when I say this, but like, it's a bit naughty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I can't even take myself seriously right now but uh yeah it's it's exciting I'm really excited and uh I think I think people will enjoy it uh there's definitely some different parts in there that I think people will enjoy is it different from what you've done before would you say so yes yeah I would say so I think it's definitely more on the pop side this is definitely a poppier track than the others mm. the others you're like oh okay I can hear the rock influence there this one it's like oh this is pop and it's cool. I think it's cool. I'm very excited about it. I'm into that. I love that. Other than the single, what else is coming? What can we look forward to coming from you? There is an album coming out, but there's going to be a heap more singles to go. I am going to be eventually traveling traveling to Sweden to get this second album written. I'm not okay. sure about any live shows at the moment. I'm not playing. I'm just focusing on the releases. Just, Just more of the same, really. Okay. Looking forward to all of it. I cannot wait. Leah, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed this, uh, this conversation. <laughs>